Hello again everyone, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Thanks for joining this live broadcast today. Uh, we're going to do a, an oil painting today and uh, hope you've uh, had a chance to look at the sketch uh, that I had up. <clears throat> I just had a question if there was somewhere to get the sketch online and I really don't have that uh, available uh, before the class, but I think that's a good idea. I'm going to see if I can carve out a space on my website to put the sketches before class so you can see them maybe half hour to an hour before class. And uh, <clears throat> maybe that will help uh, some of you get a sketch going. You can paint along with me easier. Uh, th thanks to Ellen. I think Ellen, uh, I forget her name there. Ellen Kashik. Kashik? Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, we're going to paint a uh, a scene of a bridge here. This uh, comes from a photo that I get from my uh, YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but from Facebook Photos for Artists page. Uh, the artist, the photo photographer is Tricia Rawson. She's from Lancaster, UK. And I want to thank her for this uh, picture of the bridge. It's sort of uh, in the uh, winter, start, beginning of winter for this bridge. And uh, so we may add a little more snow to it that is in this uh, photograph, but uh, Anyway, that's, I want to give credit to the uh, photographer for this. I'm going to go over now to my computer and show you, walk you through the uh, various photographs that get us from uh, the original photo to the uh, working stage and the sketch. So hold, right, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm at my computer now and uh, I want to show you the uh, original photo that we started with. I did crop it down just a little bit uh, to get it to fit my uh, 11 by 14 uh, canvas. Um, so that's the original uh, photo and uh, I cropped it slightly which made the bridge a little bit larger <clears throat> brought it a little closer um, so this is the uh, working uh, photo that we're starting with and um, I think I'm going to put a little more warmth in it than is in there put a little more color than is in there it's sort of a gray dull gray which is not unusual for a winter scene um, I'll show you the uh, grid that I have a 4 by 5 grid and uh, <clears throat> that's uh, going to be uh, what we work from and what you can sketch from uh, if you want to play this video back later. Uh, and uh, then I also have my uh, value map, which uh, I know you have seen before and heard me talk about before. And uh, so it doesn't have a lot of real dark values in it, but it's got some nicely placed values where they should be for under a bridge. and. Uh, around the trees and that sort of thing. So um, we'll work with that. And then my sketch, which uh, thanks to uh, Ellen Kashik, I'm going to uh, see if I can give this to you folks uh, ahead of class uh, from now on. Um, I just have to carve out a spot on my website and put the sketch up there. I have the sketch done. I have the photo of it because I have it here. So uh, um, maybe that would be an easier way for you to get it before class. Uh, I, will, I usually uh, start broadcasting about 15 minutes before the hour, so uh, I can broadcast that or I can put a link actually in the, uh, the event notification as to where the sketch will be. So if you want to look at that before class, you can bring it up. Um, so I think that's uh, all I want to show you there. Um, and uh, again, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat window. Um, I'll try to answer. I have another computer up by my uh, easel and uh, I'll, I try to watch it. Uh, as I'm painting and uh, I'll try to answer you live online here. So let's uh, put it back to the easel. I'll go back over there and explain the brushes and the uh, paints to you which are pretty uh, pretty similar to you by now. Pretty, If you've watched me very much uh, you'll know this is uh, the standard uh, palette I use and uh, the, I have an assortment of brushes here from Trakel, trakel.com um, and you can get uh, a link. There'll be a link below this when I post this video um, uh, of uh, the link to Trakel and there'll also be a code in there that you can use if you want to buy any brushes or uh, any other products from Trakel except for paints uh, you can get a 10% discount by just using a code that I will give you. Um, so I have an assortment here of flat brushes uh, I have all the way from a 16 down to a 0. These are uh, synthetic mongoose uh, brushes and I really like them um, and uh, uh, so I'm going to use those. I don't know how many of those I'll use. I have an assortment of filbert brushes from 16 down to 2. Uh, and I don't know how many of those I'll use, but those again are 
uh, the same kind of bristle tr uh, synthetic mongoose that Trakel makes. Have a couple of Bob Ross brushes here, uh, the fan brush that I've been using forever, my script liner that I like to use, so that I may use those later on. And I have my painting knife, uh, the old Bob Ross handy dandy uh, number five painting knife. I don't know if I'll use that or not, but uh, I have it available and I have a couple other uh, palette knives as well. Um, I also have a my, my painting, my, my colors here, I'll go around the palette and explain them to you. Uh, titanium white here, these are Bob Ross colors. Titanium white, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, sap green, uh, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and bright red. I have one Grumbacher uh, ultramarine violet uh, here, really nice dark purple color. I like to put that in uh, many of my paintings, uh, particularly winter scenes. Um, I also have a little bit of the Bob Ross uh, liquid white here, um, which I use uh, sparingly. I don't cover my whole canvas with it because I like to keep uh, a sketch in front of me on the canvas, um, so I don't do that but I do use it uh, to help thin down the paint and get some better spreadability. I also have uh, some Winsor Newton Liquin here, which is an, a medium that helps the uh, <clears throat> paint dry faster. So we have a medium that helps the paint dry faster called Liquin, and the Bob Ross uh, Liquid White that helps the paint dry slower. Um, so uh, depending on the mood I'm in and what I'm trying to do, I may want to use one or the other, but both of them give me uh, the ability to uh, um, spread the paint around very easily. So here's my uh, canvas and uh, you see at the top of my easel as usual I have my uh, photograph of the original scene, of the scene that's been cropped, and then I have my value map to help remind me of the values that we want to uh, try to achieve in this uh, painting. So I uh, will zoom in on this with my uh, video controller here and see if I can get going on this thing. I'm going to move it over just a little bit uh, so that you can get as much of the painting surface in the video scene as you can. Keep the uh, palette to the right. And uh, I think we're ready to go. So uh, I uh, have a lot of this bridge is really right in your face here. So I don't want it to be super uh, uh, colorful or I don't want you to spend a lot of time looking at it. But I do want you to see it and I want to work your eye to get you to go back here in this stream and back into the distance. So I'm going to put some nice uh, foggy areas back there and uh, also have some uh, gray sky up here. So my canvas is 11 by 14. I told you that it's covered with gray gesso, a Bob Ross uh, product called gesso, gray gesso. He has a white gesso, black gesso and gray gesso. And uh, I put that on and then when I transfer my sketch to my canvas, I use a white uh, transfer paper called Sorrel transfer paper. Uh, I use a white version of it, so I get this nice uh, white marks on my canvas. And if I don't have enough, I want to put some more. I can have this uh, pencil that I use uh, by general. It's a charcoal white pencil, and uh, I can put other marks in here with it if I need them, uh, just to remind me of something that belongs there or a, an object or something. So um, this should be a fairly easy painting, I hope. Um, so let's get going on it. I'm going to get me a small brush and start working in the in the sky back there. Um, I'm going to get a flat, a number 10 flat, and uh, we'll start working with some white. I'm going to get a little bit of uh, my medium in there, uh, my trick, uh, liquid, liquid medium. Um, and I'm going to put just a little uh, lavender in it or this violet. And uh, we're going to start from the back and see if I can uh, protect some of these trees back here so I can remember where they are uh, so I don't lose them in the process. Uh, that's one of the things I have changed from the things I learned when I studied Bob Ross uh, painting technique uh, was to uh, not cover the whole canvas in, in white, liquid white or any other color for that matter. Uh, and uh, it preserves the, uh, preserves the canvas for me so that I can uh, remember where things go. I'm going to just kind of paint around these trees a little bit so that I have some uh, uh, room there. Give me a little more white, a little more violet, uh, maybe a touch of Prussian blue in here. These Prussian colors or this Prussian blue, these two blues are really, really pretty potent. Um, and they. Uh, 
tend to eat your canvas up alive, take over all the colors. Uh, so I'm just kind of putting this in slowly, uh, putting a, a gray color. I'm going to put a little bit of my uh, midnight black in there. This midnight black that we have uh, turns gray, uh, actually very similar to the ultraviolet uh, when I put it in. Um, leave room behind here. I'm doing negative painting now behind these trees, trying to put the sky in back there. Uh, leaving room for my trees. Leaving room for snow on top of this bridge here. Um, right here we got another area that uh, I'm going to try to preserve. I got another tree right in here that I'm going to try to preserve room for. Uh, over here is just going to be pretty much um, background, a gray background. Um, over here, let's put in some, change the color. I'm changing the color up a little bit to uh, keep it from uh, being all one color. I don't want it to be all lavender or all gray or all white. Need some room on top of this bridge for snow. Need some room back here. I'm going to put some, I think I'm going to put some trees in back there that really weren't in the original photograph. Okay. Um, Over here, we got some more sky. Come on, let's get some more sky there. A little bit of liquid white. Come over here and put some in. I've got some more, a couple of trees over here. Um, this actual, the, the original photo, if you recall, and if you can't recall it, I'll, uh, I will have it online when I re-edit this video and put it up for you uh, in the final version. But uh, there's a ton of trees and branches and twigs and all kind of stuff floating around back here. And I made some marks to show them, uh, but I uh, didn't put them all in. I tried to s simplify as much as we can uh, so we don't have uh, overkill. We're taking a scene that's I don't know, this is probably maybe 50 to 75 feet wide and it goes back in a distance a good, a good ways. I don't know what that would be, you know, several hundred yards, several hundred feet, I don't know. We're trying to put it on 11 by 14 canvas, so I can't put every tree, branch, and twig and in there or I'll just drive you nuts with all kinds of detail, too much detail. Uh, so I uh, try to uh, take things out, trying to uh, simplify. It's usually the hardest thing most artists have to deal with is how do you simplify a landscape of some kind when you've got all this stuff in front of you. You just kind of want to paint it all and put it all in the scene. Uh, and that's usually not a good idea. It usually doesn't make a, a great painting when you put too much detail in. Um, Unless you're trying for photorealism, which I don't. Um, photorealism, I guess you'd want to put all that stuff in there. Um, so I'm just basically giving myself some texture in the sky, putting in some things that look like some clouds back in there. Uh, make it dark and then put a few clouds in. We've got, there's really not a lot of sun here, but what's coming, what sun is coming down, it looks like it's almost overhead uh, based on this photo. But that doesn't mean I have to paint it that way. I can, uh, again, use my artistic license and put in things that aren't there and leave things out that are there, move things around. That's the fun of some of this, is you can just sort of create your own little world with uh, brush strokes. All right. Um, I think I'll leave it like that maybe. I could smooth that out a little bit. I don't want it to be... If I leave big gobs of paint back there, I see a lot of artists will leave big clunks of paint, particularly in oil paintings where you get a lot of texture with this paint. If you put that in the, in the paint back there, it 
tends to draw the eye to it, and uh, that's not really the center of interest. If, if the sky is the center of interest, then maybe putting in some uh, big chunks of white paint back there is what you want to do. Um, I'm sort of just um, making this little impression, impressionistic look here, putting in some shadows under some clouds. I put in the clouds, put in the uh, shadows under them. Maybe a few little shadows over here. I don't know. I'm just sort of making this up as I go. All right. Um, so that's pretty much the, the background in the sky. Um, don't need a whole lot more than that. And uh, so while I'm back here in the background, I think maybe I'm just going to go ahead and put in the uh, put in those trees. Uh, before I do that, get this paint on my brush, I'm going to come down here in this area where I want to have some sky below this bridge. I want this to sort of stand out back here as sort of a something in the distance. Back there, a little white to it, um, bring it down. So I want it to be similar colors. I want it, you to think that this is all part of the same sky. I don't want it to be uh, different in color. So while I got these colors in my brush, I'm going to just sort of blend it together here and uh, mix it up a little bit, um, add a few Things look like clouds back there. These are pretty far off from us. Probably can't see that. It's so. Uh, it's almost the same value as the my canvas. This is this mid value, mid value five on the scale. And uh, so I'll leave it like that. When I put something over it, it will pop out, and you'll see what it is. All right. Um, still got my uh, number ten Trickell brush here, flat brush. I'm using. And uh, I want to start getting some uh, some of these trees in. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my browns here, my Van Dyke brown, my uh, dark sienna, maybe a little bit of alizarin in there. Uh, get some color change. There's even some green in it, um, a little bit of mossy color. Some of these are not unusual for our areas in, in England. Uh, see sort of a mossy green. a little more dark here like that again when I'm looking for shadows I don't see much here because uh, it's really I think the sun's coming down from the top of this of this so therefore I'm going to probably want to create some highlights and uh, that are uh, really not in this photograph by uh, putting some highlights on these trees and branches. Okay, just a mixture of my uh, dark browns here, my uh, light brown. Um, have some nice nice uh, branches going up still using this uh, number 10 brush uh, and the photograph has a lot more detail in it than this um, but I don't want to uh, overdo it because I'm painting something that's, I don't know, it's <laughs> pretty large and I'm trying to put it down into about four inches here on, the, on this canvas. So that's why you simplify. That's why you take things out of your photograph and put them in your painting uh, so that 
it makes a pleasing scene on canvas. All right, I'll maybe put a couple of branches out here like this that I can put in now with a larger brush. And I'll come back with my rigger or one of my other brushes later and put some of those in. There's actually another little uh, tree going up like this. Put him down like there. All right, so I've got my uh, at least three sizes of tree. I have a large tree, a medium tree, and a small tree. Actually, a couple small ones. Um, so that's a, a common artistic trait to uh, put in uh, these three sizes of things. Um, it looks a lot nicer. It looks more, um, I don't know, it looks more real on canvas than it does uh, in a photograph. Photograph, you have to just take whatever you get, whatever you see. And uh, here we can play games. So I'll change my colors up a little bit, put more mossy green in there maybe. Didn't have a great big tree on this side in the photograph. Um, I decided to put two or three trees together and make one larger one, about the size of the one on the other side. Um, probably should make it different in size than uh, what's on the left side. So I may make it even a little wider here. Something like that. And the smaller one over here. Again, if you have any questions, type them into the uh, chat window and I'll try to answer. Have any suggestions? like to hear those too. Uh, YouTube has put up another, a new uh, feature for us to use. Um, it allows us to like send out polls, send out polling questions and ask you questions about anything we can dream up. So I may be doing that one of these days when I can think of something I want to get your feedback on. I really like to hear your uh, thoughts on painting, on the types of paintings I do, if you got ideas for other paintings. Uh, I'm always looking for uh, new ideas for new, uh, new paintings. Um, in the new year I want to try to do some other kinds of scenes other than just pure landscapes. I've got uh, thoughts on maybe a nocturnal scene, night scene, something like that. Um, sounds like it might be fun. Uh, okay, here, let's see. All right, I think that's going to do for now with that. I'm going to pick up a bit of orange highlight to warm it up just a little more and see if I can get a little, so if I put the light on the left, that's not very much of a highlight. I'm creating a sort of an orange color here, a yellowish orange uh, to put on the left side of this. Just a little bit of that yellowish or ochre color here. Give myself a little bit of a other tone. Come back and put some snow on top of that after a bit, but right now that's uh, kind of what I want to do. All right, um, let's 
leave that for now and uh, come back and put we'll put some more a lot of a few more branches and things in here but I'm going to use a smaller brush for that okay so much for that all right now this um, down here's got a very similar color um, in some areas it's got a little more red in it I'm going to pick up a little alizarin and put in some colors here that might uh, go along with some ochre. Back to my browns. I'm leaving a border up there for some snow. I'll come back and lay some white on top of that. starts turning more red. So far I've only used one brush today folks. This uh, number 10 flat. I have all those brushes and uh, so far I'm using one. A little more green and I don't know, ochre and green in here. Pick up a little mossy color. That's probably too mossy. But um, put a little brown over the top. Coming along here. All right. There's another little snow ledge right here. There's actually the, the uh, block of this bridge sticks out and makes another sort of ledge of snow here. So I want to put that in. I'm sort of painting between two little ledges of snow right now. And uh, just to give you an idea of what I'm going to do after that, I'm going to come down here and start getting a little redder over here, make a little bit of that. Uh, so I've left room now for another uh, area of snow. Okay. Henry, thank you for wishing everybody Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. All right, change it up. Add some ochre. It sort of has an ochre color kind of coming down in this area of the, of the uh, bridge face. And uh, up above, it's actually some, uh, looks like some viney, some uh, vine type material coming down. I don't know if I'm going to put that in or not. I'm not crazy about putting those vines in, but maybe worth putting in. I'll see what it needs as I get further along here. <clears throat> Little mortar cracks them the, the uh, between all of these blocks. Um, I think I would take way too long and probably drive you all crazy if I spent half an hour putting in all of those. I'm going to put in some enough to uh, make it look like there are mortar cracks in between. So, this paint has a lot of oil in it, so I'm not really having to add much of my uh, medium to get it to spread because it spreads so easily here. Um, not having much trouble with it at all. 
Okay, let me stop and step back and take a little look. We've been going here for about 30 minutes. Okay, um, I do see this ochre color coming down a lot more prevalent in this area with some <coughs> green, some mossy green in it. Pick up some other colors here and add in some get a color over it and then we can come back and add colors on top of it and uh, I need to uh, okay I'm checking my Something's beeping on my cell phone. I turn my cell phone on and put a stopwatch on myself so I can keep track of the time. And uh, something starts beeping at me, which drives me nuts. I turn off as many notifications as I can turn off, but I still get notified on stuff. lighter colors, maybe put a little bit of this uh, violet in here. So I've got a nice set of changing colors here that's uh, actually making the, uh, uh, the surface of that look a lot, lot nicer. Um, and uh, that's really what I want to try to do here is to get that uh, something going on here that is more than just um, one bland brown or gray color. So I've got snow. I'm going to be filtering in snow down here at the bottom. This is all snow down here so I'm just putting in a few spots of uh, brown down here. Ochre, pick up some ochre. I'm going to start working my way back up here now on this, around this thing. If I change the color, I'll, I'll, you'll know, you'll know there's something change, different about this. I change the value. Um, So it's all about variation and trying to uh, make you see something going on here when this is really just a flat surface. Um, <laughs> it's really uh, interesting to try to make something look three-dimensional when it's a uh, two-dimensional flat surface. Um, So let's put a, a little keystone type block sitting in here. Kind of holds this thing together and then we have stuff on this side similar. I'm going to keep the blocks similar. Goes around that way. out my brush. See all the different variations in color, all the gradation and uh, mixture of colors. I haven't cleaned this brush out. I'm just adding color on top of color, changing the color. If I want some ochre in there, I just go back and pick up some ochre and put it in, let it blend on the canvas, use my brush to move it around. Uh, it's a fun way to paint. You don't have to sit here and mix paint for 20 minutes trying to get the exact color because I'm not trying to get the exact color. I'm trying to uh, give you the impression of a, a bridge over here. Uh, it's got a lot of texture in it, got changes of color in it. And uh, so it's uh, a much more uh, 
I don't know, relaxing or freeing way to paint um, when you don't have to try to mix a specific color for a specific uh, surface. Um, under here, we got some really, really dark stuff going on under here. Um, actually has a little bit of ochre on top of it, so I'll just come back and lay a little bit of that ochre in here and let it go to almost go to black. So this is some of the really, really dark areas that I want to highlight and make stand out. So keep it really dark in here, really black. The black that I have on my palette is the Bob Ross <clears throat> Midnight Black, but it turns very easily turns uh, sort of a lavender. When you put anything in it, it turns lavender. So I usually use Midnight Black and Van Dyke Brown. Sometimes I'll put a little blue in it. Uh, I'm not putting much blue in this painting today, uh, but I am trying to make that underside of this bridge really dark. Okay, making progress here. Start to lighten it up a little bit. There's some other colors coming in over here. Almost too many colors there. Let me see if I can uh, put that alizarin in there, get it moving around. a sharp edge coming down here because I want to uh, make that very distinct definition there between the uh, bridge and the background. Put a little warmth down here. This is the underside of the, uh, the tunnel part of this bridge. So we can have some warmth coming in here. Warm it up. Gray it up. Took a little midnight black, a little bit of white, and just sort of throw it in there. There's reflection coming back from the, uh, the water here, from the ice and stuff that's building up on the, uh, the water. All right, now I've got a very, very dark base on this down here. Just tapping in. Like that. And that dark is going to sort of blend up. Pull it up just a little. Okay, that's all I need. The rest of that's water, so I'm going to have another uh, another type of uh, color coming over that. Um, over here, I'm going to go back and pick up some of my uh, other colors. Finish putting this around. And uh, pull it off. The, take it right off the camp right off the canvas here. So my brush strokes, when I make these brush strokes curve like that, it tells you we've got a uh, something going on there that's curved. Um, when I put some other uh, um, strokes in there to, to like show you the blocks, the difference between the blocks here, you'll know that that's, that's the, what's holding this bridge up really. Um, all right, um, that's a big part of that bridge is done. I got a little space over here needs some more. All right, um, what else can I do to that bridge? That's uh, pretty well, pretty well done. Let me put a little bit of a 
dark thing right here, maybe. Put something on the other side, similar. All right. Um, now, how about that background underneath that bridge? I think it's time to wash my brush. This is the second time <clears throat> I've washed my brush today. And I've only used one brush so far. So you don't need to buy a thousand brushes, folks. Just buy you a number 10 Trekel and uh, use it for the whole painting almost. I am going to come back now and put some snow and some other things. I may use some other brushes there. But back here in this area, <clears throat> I want to uh, give you the uh, impression that there's some, um, I don't know, trees that have still got some of their leaves on them or a little bit of a probably too bright maybe for being in the distance I need to tone that down just a little um, let me put a little bit of this uh, violet in here kind of like uh, trees in the fall look um, Maybe some more just pure dark violet back in here. I don't know what's back there. I really can't tell that well. I can just sort of, I want to change the value just very so slightly. If you can see the difference between the value of the background and the value of these trees. Uh, I'm going to put some of this over here and sort of mix it together. Um, leave a few of those uh, colors in there. Um, coming down here, we've got some other coloring on this bank. There's a bank that runs down here. Put a few things in there like this. I'm just using whatever paints on this brush and just pushing it around. Uh, Okay, it gets some depth. You see that by making this go down, I'm giving giving uh, the viewer some real depth in this painting. Okay, a um, few more spots of this violet or lavender, or ultraviolet, whatever it's called, um, and here I'm going to some more white over this I think and in, uh, in a little bit but let's just kind of put this down right here um, this actually is not bad color for the uh, the water there um, this water is really lighter than uh, just using the side of this brush just pulling in I'll put a few other some darker colors in there to give it a little bit of texture a distinction I like the way that looks on the uh, monitor here behind me I hope it's looking good to you guys. I, uh, things always tend to look better behind me <laughs> on this monitor than they do up close on the canvas itself. Um, so uh, I hope I'm putting in some light color here now to sort of give more sky reflection. Um, mix it in, give myself some and then I'm going to start getting more, as we get this way, we're going to get more, a little darker in this violet area here, if I can get some more darker paint. Um, might be a little too much. 
is probably just a little bit too much, so let's these things need to sort of come down like this because we got reflection going on in here. Uh, probably can't see that very well, but uh, I want the brush strokes to go vertical here. And then down here, we'll just sort of fill that in. Because I got reflections, I want those brush strokes to go this way where I don't have reflections showing. I want them to show you the, the water as it's moving toward us. It's a nice little lavender with a little pink in it. Close to the sky, but yet it's a different, a uh, little bit different value, a little bit different color. Over here, we've got put in some Mix a little bit of that ochre with this uh, violet has given me this a little bit of a well I guess I had some alizarin in there too uh, but it's giving me a little bit of a pinkish color here that uh, I kind of like. Okay. You see those uh, subtle vertical strokes I put in there, those vertical brush strokes? tells you that that water right there has, is kind of not moving and it's reflecting. Um, the water here has uh, interesting coloring on it. I'm going to put some uh, just brush strokes of uh, white paint here over the top to make it look like there's some ice forming. Ice and or snow. Could be. Um, under here, I've got a lot of dark stuff going on under there. I got a dark bank back here. Okay, um, I think I want to use a little bit of this violet that I have here in my brush back here in this area, a little bit more back here to sort of bring that bank. Can't see that very well, I'll bet. Um, I'm going to. If I can lighten it up a little bit. Over here we've got a number of things coming down here. Put in some let's mix this together a little bit better. Okay. Stop, step back, take a look, see if that's gonna work. I think it is. We've been going about, not quite an hour, about 48, 45 minutes maybe from the time we started painting. Um, all right, I'm, I'm going to put some uh, tree trunks back in there and a few other things, but and maybe some more white paint to give me some uh, um, snow back there. But I want to put this bank, I've got another dark bank that's running along here. And I'm going to make it either brown or dark black. Mix it up, put some brown in there, put some uh, dark bank over here. So if I put these dark marks in there, all of a sudden I'm showing you the edge of this river or creek, whatever it is. Don't want it to be too dark back there. I want it to get lighter as we go in the distance. Some more white in there. Um, there's a little bit of dark here on this coming down under here like this. A little bit of this uh, color. 
sort of ties into the uh, dark that's under here. All right, sort of outline. Now you can see, you can see that going back. Here we've got some interesting color under here. I'm going to go ahead and put this in. This is a part of the bank that's not been covered in snow, it doesn't look like. Change the color, add some other tones in there. Okay. Thanks for sticking with me, folks. We're making good progress here. And I've got some dark uh, stuff going on down here. I'm just going to use the edge of this brush and just sort of mess it up a little bit like that. All right, a few little dark streaks in here, maybe. To now this thing over here, what am I going to do with it? Um, put a little more red in there, maybe. Nice color under there. There is some reflection going on in there too. Uh, I'm going to uh, give me a little white and my see if I can sort of blend this together here so that it sort of goes from the color I have to the Like that, put a few vertical streaks in here like that. All of a sudden, see more reflectivity in that darker area. I think that's what I want to show you, yeah. It's actually a reflection of trees and I can put some of those in here. Um, here there's a little bit of white going on there. All right, I got a nice sheen. It looks like a mirror going on under there. I really like the looks of that. This area here is going to be a little bit darker. Too dark. Wash out the brush. Just come back and pull it this way here like this. It shows even a little bit. It's probably like a little reflection coming down from the, uh, coming down from the top of that bridge. All right, still with me, folks? Okay, we're making good progress here. Um, the snow back, this is all snow, that's all snow. That's snow and some, I got some dark uh, branches and things back in here a little bit. Probably too, too dark, put a little ochre in that. Too much. Now, we're getting about the point where we're going to have to put some snow in here, folks. I think we're, uh, <laughs> we're getting to that point. Um, I'm going to pull out my good old fan brush, Bob Ross fan brush. This thing is a real workhorse. It's got very strong, stiff bristles. And where am I going to start? I'll put them in here for sure. I'm just using almost pure titanium white here. Uh, have just a put just a touch of ochre in it to warm it up. Just a very small amount. Um, yeah. 
yeah, that's uh, doing what I want. So, plenty of titanium white. Always snow scenes, you use a lot of titanium white, at least I do. Plenty of white. If you grab that and pull it back, it'll actually pull some of that uh, dark bank uh, down into the uh, up into the snow itself. Uh, It's sort of, it's not really start sharp or steep. It gets steeper over here, uh, but this is kind of flat along here. Just put it in there and see what happens. All right, there's that. Um, got the uh, snow here, sort of like a pushes over there see if we can pull some shadows back in here shadows back and some uh, other uh, debris and stuff along the edge there that's not nearly the way I want it yet um, Need to take a second here and get a drink of water, folks. I've been talking for almost an hour. We have a good bit of white snow to put in that background. <clears throat> Thinking I want it to be just, instead of having uh, ochre in it, I think I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, this uh, violet in it, ultramarine violet. So it's not perfectly white. I don't want to use pure titanium white all the time. Let's go back here and see if we can put in a little bit of this. Yeah, I may need to get me a smaller uh, brush. These, uh, this fan brush is really good for um, big, long, sweeping things. And they, it's kind of tight back here. We could just tone that down just a tad. Over here we've got a few things that can do the same thing with. Okay. It's looking like the bank of a uh, along the river. Over here we've got some down. All along here we'll put in some of that. It looks like a lot more snow in my painting that was in the uh, photograph for sure. Um, I'm going to pull up a few things here that look like they're mm -hmm. I'm going to put in some uh, trees. I think I want a little more white back here in the background. I'm going to get a smaller brush just to see if I can uh, it's such a small area back here the distance So I'm making it smaller. You see the bank, you can tell the difference in the size of the bank. Um, 
and the amount of snow on it that's up closer, compare that with what's in the distance and you can get a little idea of the perspective here that I'm working with. I've got a number two Trekel uh, Filbert working with here. filter it back there okay now I need some trees in the background I need some more of this same type of uh, snow in here along there um, <laughs> I get pick that up and I get all this uh, brown in my brush I'm gonna have to wash my brush out here little brush okay maybe I'll get a little bit of liquid white in there to kind of make it flow a little smoother in here actually picking up the uh, brown a lot but that's okay I guess I don't need to have it perfectly uh, white got snow on the top up here too let's That's got to be almost pure white up there. Got that background we got to deal with. Again, that's more snow than is actually in the photograph, but it's helping that stand out. I'm actually painting it so that it actually runs down into the the brick here. <clears throat> Pick up more. This is where people tell me they can't draw straight lines so they can't paint. Well, I, uh, I'm not drawing a straight line up there. Even though the photograph may look that's, like that's a perfect perfectly squared off bridge, um, I'm not letting it be that way. Okay. This little snow along here is thinner. Picking up colors underneath. This is probably a good place to go get my script liner. Because it's even got narrow, <coughs> smaller, uh, a lot smaller bristles. Get in here and get some thinner on it. Um, a thinner on and this paint will make it run very smoothly. Um, over here and see if I can. Just put in a nice little ridge of snow here. Okay, making progress here. A 
a little more thinner. Gotta get that paint re really runny with thinner. Start putting in a few marks that start showing you the uh, mortar here. You've got snow on top there, a little snow there. Just very lightly. I don't have to put every one of these in because the I will help finish it off. Just try to make them the right angle is all. Okay. Um, up here we've got a few things that run like this. Just abstract it in. You don't have to make every mortar joint show up but again if I were doing a photorealistic I'd be here for a couple days with uh, all kinds of brush strokes to try to make this thing look real a little bit of ochre in my white here and uh, white in my ochre I guess one way or the other and uh, so I'm just trying to make some marks here that help you realize we've got blocks here that are So it's telling the story, it's not uh, giving you every block and every, every mortar joint. <clears throat> okay, now um, these areas, I think that's most of the areas where I wanted to put the snow initially. So now I'm going to use my uh, <clears throat> this rigger again with thinner in it and I'm going to go back into my browns and I'm going to start picking up some of these trees that are back in the distance there. Back in here we've got some trees that uh, I haven't put in yet. Back there, maybe change the color, make it a little bit um, <clears throat> violet as we go back. There's some trees like kind of sticking out back here. So just little bitty things that kind of stick out. little debris or things that help tell the story back here. There's put some shadows in and things along the bank here. All right, back over this side we've got a few. I want those to be lighter. I'm going to pick up some more lighter color, a little bit of lighter value. I want them to show up, but I don't want them to be dark and in your face. So we'll put a little white along there and tone some of them down. It needs a little more value. A few back there. Some things in there like that. 
we're getting close here, folks. We're uh, not going to be going till 3 o'clock today, I don't think. But that's okay. I'll give you a little Christmas break here. Um, up here, I've got a lot of up, up in the... Uh, upper part up here that I uh, haven't finished off yet either. I wanted to come back with that one. I have this this nice uh, rigger brush with these really fine bristles. Um, I'm going to come back in here and start putting in some hopefully get some more I'm just ad-libbing, folks. I'm not really paying much attention to what's going on in the photograph. Just sort of filling in spaces here with uh, branches, dark, sort of a grade down squiggly line. Don't need straight lines. Filling it in. These are trees that have all lost their leaves. So another little branch coming out like that. A couple of others. Sort of fill in this area a little bit, put in some more branches that uh, help tell the story, fill it out. A lot of stuff going on up here. That's mm. my problem with this using this brush like this is it doesn't hold a ton of paint. It has a nice it covers nicely, but it doesn't hold a lot of paint. So you got to keep going back to the palette. I'm back getting more right. ton of stuff up here and all these have crisscrossing things that sort of help tell the story here. I'm just kind of filling in spaces so I don't have a lot of gaps up here. Um, pull a few of these down this way, connect them in. All right, now I want to come back and put in a few more. Um, Get some that have some snow on them. These are all just sort of a grayish, gray color. Okay. All right, something like that is probably good enough. Um, so it looks like there might be connected. There might be some of these trees that kind of come up here and come through and maybe. Something like that. All right. Put a little more white in here. Pick up a little more of my white. <clears throat> What else can I do with this here? Um, maybe, oh, I was going to put in some uh, these branches. There's a number of branches that sort of come across this way. I need a lot more 
uh, thinner here. Just want to make those stand out. I'm going to use some white, titanium white, and uh, just gray it down ever so slightly. Because when I put it on, it's going to pick up whatever's on the canvas. So the, th the more thinner I have in it, the looser it is, um, the easier it will go on and not pick up the stuff that's under it. So I want to have some branches that are kind of coming in from the side over here. That point you toward the focal point. Okay, I'm just using white and a combination of titanium white and this mixture I have on the palette here with a lot of uh, thinner in it. And just making brush strokes that come in here. So you see by having almost like double loading the brush, not exactly that, but it's the same idea. Coming from off the canvas here, somewhere over here, there's another big tree that's putting out some branches. And we're just trying to capture a few of them by putting this white, kind of a yucky, liquidy. And you want to put them where the dark is behind them so you can see them, right? So even if they got snow on them, they can still be seen here. All right, I don't want to keep doing too much of that. Um, could even have some from the other side, but I think I'll skip that. Um, the other thing I might do is the little dry brush here on this area here. This snow here has almost no, no debris on it. I'm going to see if I can put in a few little sort of break it up. It's really kind of too much white. There are some uh, rocks and things showing through, some dirt showing through. Um, so I'll just put in a few things with the back of the brush, just sort of hit it with uh, something like that. Come down over here, maybe there's a few things on the down in that area, like that. Just a few shadows. I didn't want this big area there with all the... And uh, let's see, there was, oh, there was a couple shadows in here. I want to get those in to help make that water look just a little more realistic. This where the reflection is here. I mean, I've, pull, I've pulled down some things, but I didn't put any actual things in there that look like we've got trees reflecting in it. Like that. There was a kind of a heavy one over here. Something like that. All right, that helps even tell the story better. These vertical things. Like that. Um, I think that might be about it, folks. Let me step back and look one more time and just see. Got a little bit of, oh, I didn't finish the snow over here, did I? Uh, just happened to catch myself. There is snow coming down over there. Where else? Did I get it everywhere else? I think I did. Okay, just a few little dry brush things here like this. Let's see here. Step back, take a look. We've got some depth, got some foreground, got some middle ground, got some reflections. Got some nice stuff going on over here. This is sort of, a, could make this some bushes or something over here that would be, <clears throat> maybe just kind of echo some of the colors, some of these colors I've got back here. It's always a good thing to diagonally 
echo those colors. Nothing like that's in a photograph. But for the sake of balance and design, let's put in a few um, things over here that are buried in the snow. And, uh, and we can take our handy dandy fan brush and sort of just pull them down like this. That's a little better. Yep. Pull more white right on top of that, maybe. Okay, that looks like a bank. It looks like it kind of walk off of there and fall into the river. Um, I want to have a little curve curvature there, so I'm letting the brush kind of hang over and just pulling it back like that. Okay, we got good underside of that bridge. All right, folks, I think I'm going to stop early here and uh, see if I can find a place to put my name and I will sign this thing and we will be finished for today. Need a little darker. Can't quite read that, but that's okay. I want to make that kind of look like it is part of the uh, stuff that's happening here on the bank. All right. Okay, I'll back out and say uh, <laughs> thank you again for watching and following along with me today. I hope you enjoyed this painting. I hope you give it a try. I will re-edit this video and have it out on my uh, website in uh, two or three days. And uh, I'll also have the sketch out there, the link for the sketch, the link for the value map, the link for the original photo. I'm putting all that stuff out there now so you can see it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if you think about it, check out my website. Uh, sign up for my monthly newsletter if you like. Uh, I have some calendars for sale if you'd like to buy a calendar. There's a link on there to buy some cal calendars from everything I painted uh, this year, <clears throat> pretty much. Um, and I also have a uh, trying out another website. If you want to do something for me, just check out uh, this other website. It's called ArtCreatorsTV.com. ArtCreatorsTV.com. Um, it's, it's one I've been working on to try to get much of my existing website material content moved over there and uh, I think I want to make that my website at some point but it's not quite ready yet so take a look at it uh, give me some comments give me some feedback it's a it's kind of website that you can actually make comments on you can like sign up and uh, and there's some shopping links on there if you want to look for things to buy that uh, will help me uh, pay for my uh, um, supplies here. I get a little commission off of some things on that website. There also have the links on my regular website, but uh, anyway, check out uh, artcreatorstv.com and uh, check out the links for shopping. Uh, you can buy a calendar there. You can buy a calendar on my website. And uh, that's all my commercialism for today. I hope you don't mind that. I'm just trying to make a little extra money out of the things I'm doing here without trying to uh, speed up my painting and putting a bunch of paintings that are you know time lapse fast things a lot of people do that and put many many paintings out there and many videos out there and uh, that tends to get them more traffic and maybe even some more views i don't know but uh, anyway uh, appreciate you being here appreciate uh, sticking with me and uh, i'll uh, be back next week my plan is next wednesday to uh, do a watercolor a couple of watercolors probably as usual and uh, until that until I see you again, I'll, I'll say happy holidays and uh, best wishes for a new year. And uh, I don't see you in my watercolor class next week. I'll see you uh, next year. So, so long for now. Bye-bye.